A door left open in the middle of the night reveals a terrible secret. This case stood out because the offender's actions to delay the discovery of the crime actually called more attention to the scene. Investigators scour the crime scene looking for clues. Sometimes what is missing from a crime scene can be more significant than what is left behind. Florida, a tight-knit community on the edge of the Atlantic Ocean, a place where neighbors watch out for each other. So when a resident notices the door to a woman's house has been left open in the middle of the night, she calls police. Sergeant Kevin Fain is patrolling the area when the call comes in. I responded location and uh, lo and behold the door there was a door standing wide open although no one appears to be home the officer can hear voices inside the house when I approached the residence I could hear some noise inside it so if someone was talking so uh, I announced my presence thinking someone might have still been at home When no one answers, Sergeant Fane enters and finds the source of the voices. A television set turned on in the empty living room. I went through every room in the house. There was no one in the home. I noticed that there was a purse on a chair. I went to uh, look in the purse and uh, found a, a driver's license uh, with the name Dorothy Berger. To Sergeant Fane, it's clear that something isn't right, and inside the bedroom, that impression is confirmed. Dorothy Berger's bed is askew, and a small statue above the bed is lying on its side, broken. But it's what Sergeant Fane sees lying on the bed that stops him cold. There were a pair of glasses on the bed with a small amount of blood by the glasses. The glasses were bent. Things start becoming a little eerie at that point. Blood, broken eyeglasses, a bed askew. To Fane, it looks like a struggle has taken place. And there's another reason to worry. Dorothy Berger's car is missing. All the neighbors that we spoke to uh, told us that she was the type of person that didn't drive around at night. Dorothy Berger is night blind. She never takes her car out after dark. So we have a car that's missing. And a woman that supposed to don't drive at night and she's driving without her glasses. It just didn't add up. Detective Bob Sarver leads the investigation into Dorothy Berger's disappearance. And right away, he suspects that this is more than just a missing persons case. If we have a person that's missing, um, and there are some suggestions uh, of uh, struggles, we tend to believe the worst that could happen to that person. Detective Sarver thinks it's likely Dorothy Berger has been forcibly taken from her home. He immediately issues an alert for the missing woman and her car. Roadblocks are set up across the county. Helicopters are brought in to help. But the search turns up nothing. For the moment, Dorothy Berger and her car seem to have disappeared. Detective Sarver sends crime scene technician Scott Dwyer to collect evidence from Dorothy's bedroom. 
he uses a high-powered light source to see what the naked eye cannot. Using the light source at different angles on the floor enables me to be able to highlight and enhance detail. When Dwyer directs the light just inches above Dorothy's bedroom floor, footprints emerge in the dust. It appeared to be fresh. Uh, there had not been any accumulation of dust to mask it. And one of the prints contains more than just a tread pattern. The footwear impression had a distinctive logo belonging to the Converse All-Star manufacturer. Fresh footprints. Whoever left them was probably inside Dorothy's bedroom the night she disappeared. When Detective Sarver reviews photos of the prints, he confirms they don't belong to the missing woman. She didn't have any athletic shoes. The prints that we saw, um, they were definitely a larger size shoe than what was in her closet. The footprints will be an important piece of evidence if police can find a suspect. It's been 24 hours since Dorothy Berger and her car disappeared. Knowing that time is running out, Detective Sarver calls in Special Agent Dale Hinman to assist in the investigation. Agent Hinman specializes in reading behavioral clues at a crime scene. The blood on the bed and the broken eyeglasses told us that Dorothy Berger had been taken from her bedroom after a struggle. But there is no evidence that the offender fought to get inside the home. The fact that there was no forced entry suggested that Mrs. Berger may have let the offender in. Will Dale Hinman's insight help bring Dorothy Berger home? <laughs> Dorothy Berger has vanished from her home, leaving behind evidence of a struggle. Special Agent Dale Hinman thinks that Dorothy Berger has been abducted, but doesn't know why. To get a better feel for the case, Hinman and Detective Sarver visit the missing woman's home. Dale, when we got to the house, the uh, front door was open, uh, the lights inside the house were on, the TV was on. There wasn't any signs of forced entry to the front door or anywhere else around the house that we could see. So either the victim wasn't very security conscious or she recognized the offender and let him in. Sarver points out the fresh footprints inside the bedroom. These are uh, some footprints that were found somewhere right or along the side of the bed. It looks like a Converse tennis shoe. You can see it better on this one. This appears to be an adult male sneaker. Does the victim have any grown children that live in the area? No, the only relative that we're aware of is a niece. She lives in Broward County, and uh, she wouldn't have had a shoe that size. And she didn't have other people that would come to the house? Um, from what we know, no. Whoever left the prints did not belong inside Dorothy's bedroom. And for Agent Hinman, that can only mean one thing. Sounds like this shoe print belongs to the perpetrator. Agent Hinman pieces together what happened next. That's the headboard that's moved away from the wall. You can see it almost looks like this little figurine was knocked over. over from activity on the bed. Yeah. Damn so somebody was pushing on the bed. Yeah. Well, based on the position of the bed and the location of the shoe print, it looks as though the victim was sexually assaulted in the bed. But it's the fact that the offender removed the victim and her car from the scene after the attack that are important clues for Agent Hinman. The offender may have removed Mrs. Berger from the scene to try to delay the discovery of the crime. If this is true, he probably knew her and thought he might become a suspect. And Hinman thinks that because the offender left in the victim's car, that it may be an indication he arrived at the scene on foot. 
Since it looked like Mrs. Berger let the offender in and he arrived on foot, we decided to look at individuals who lived in the neighborhood. Detective Sarver questions the neighbors to find out if anyone was lurking around the neighborhood prior to Dorothy's disappearance. A couple of them said that they were a little bit concerned for her safety because she was such a nice woman that she would oftentimes let people inside of her home uh, without really knowing them that well. He learns that a man named Eddie Clark has been knocking on doors looking for work. And Clark is no stranger to the Melbourne Police Department. Eddie Clark was known to us by the nickname of Fast Eddie because when he was younger, he used to get in knife fights and he was real fast with a knife. And Fast Eddie had done some work for Dorothy Berger. We learned from the neighbors that Eddie Clark did odd jobs for Mrs. Berger, anything from cleaning her windows to moving the trash down to the curb. But Dorothy Berger had confided to a neighbor that Clark's presence sometimes made her uneasy. Mrs. Berger voiced a little concern about uh, Eddie Clark coming over maybe a little bit too regularly, um, trying to do odd jobs for her. Detective Sarver brings Clark in for questioning. How often do you trim her head? About the time, maybe it's more than maybe it's two weeks. How much money would she just give you if you were having a hard time? No, I don't know. When was the last time that you were in her house? Back to the bedroom. You were in the bedroom? Clark fits the profile. He's from the neighborhood, he travels on foot, and he knows Dorothy Berger. But he denies any involvement in Dorothy Berger's disappearance. But Melbourne police have one ace up their sleeve. What kind of shoes you got? Will a pair of shoes lead the investigators to Dorothy Berger? Police may be closing in on a suspect in Dorothy Berger's disappearance. A local handyman, Eddie Clark, is brought in for questioning. Whoever abducted Dorothy Berger left distinct Converse All-Star shoe prints inside her bedroom. We were looking for someone who wore this brand of shoe. After a few minutes of questioning, police play their trump card. What kind of shoes you got? Let me see the bottom. Have your other shoes? Let me see. Hold them over here. Eddie Clark appeared open and honest during the interview, but more importantly, his shoes did not match the prints that were found in the bedroom. Eddie Clark is released. It's now been three days since Dorothy Berger's disappearance, and police no longer have any leads. To help move the investigation forward, Detective Sarver enters the case into a countywide database looking for similar crimes. There have been, I believe, two to three elderly uh, females that have been murdered in their homes. And all the victims have one thing in common. They are similar in age and appearance to Dorothy Berger. Are the cases connected? Detective Sarver hopes Dale Hinman can answer that question. He briefs her about the other victims. She was in her bed, um, partially clothed. She'd been sexually assaulted. And she's also inside of her residence as well? Yes, she is. In any of these other cases, was a vehicle taken? No. The fact that Mrs. Berger and her car are both missing from this residence makes this case different from all the other cases. I don't think it's related. Dorothy Berger was a victim of a complicated crime. Not only was there a sexual assault, but she was abducted and her car was taken. And Agent Hinman thinks the missing car is the key to solving this crime have to consider the fact that the car could be one of the motives for the crime. 
We decided to focus the investigation not only on someone who knew Dorothy Berger, but someone who may need her car for transportation. Sarver runs a search for stolen cars in the area. He doesn't get any hits, but he does learn that a motorcycle was recently stolen from Berger's neighborhood. The man accused of the theft is Johnny Hoskins, and he has been in trouble with the law before. But it's his current address that jumps out at Detective Sarver. He's recently moved in with his girlfriend, who lives next door to Dorothy Berger. Hoskins was a good suspect because he already tried to steal a motorcycle from the same neighborhood. He had a criminal history and he lived next door to Dorothy Berger. When police go looking for Hoskins, they're told he's out of town, indefinitely. But Sarver and Hinman have an idea of where to find him. We thought the offender would take the victim to a place he was very familiar with, somewhere he had been before. And for Johnny Hoskins, that would be his home state, Georgia. An all-point bulletin is issued for Johnny Hoskins and Dorothy Berger's sedan. In southern Georgia, Officer Chris Owens is about to pull over a car for a routine traffic violation when he hears the alert. When we ran the license plate, it came back. It was wanted out of Florida, Melbourne, Florida. Owens calls her backup and follows the car into the parking lot of a fast food restaurant. Will the driver of the car lead police to Dorothy Berger? In southern Georgia, Officer Chris Owens has spotted the car that belongs to Dorothy Berger, a woman police suspect was abducted from her home in Florida. When the car left the drive-thru, I had already called for a backup unit. And as it pulled away from the drive-thru window, we stopped it in the parking lot. He approaches the car. A man is behind the wheel. I asked him his name. He said his name was Johnny Hoskins. Police finally have a break in the case. The man pulled over for a routine traffic violation is the same man wanted for questioning in Dorothy Berger's disappearance. And he is driving the missing woman's car. Officer Owens asks Hoskins to open the trunk. In the trunk of the car, we found some vegetation, some leaves, and some dirt, and a large spot of blood in there. Police send the blood to the lab and bring Johnny Hoskins in for questioning. But before Detective Sarver can ask the first question, he notices Hoskins' shoes. He sat down and put his foot up on his knee and... Uh, it was positioned perfectly. I could see the sole of his shoe, and he had a Converse All-Star tennis shoes on. We knew we had him when investigators saw that Johnny Hoskins was wearing the exact same brand of shoe as the prints found inside the victim's bedroom. Confronted with the evidence against him, Hoskins leads police to a wooded area behind his parents' house in Georgia, where police discover a shallow grave. And the remains of Dorothy Berger. We don't know why he committed this crime, but the evidence tells us that he sexually assaulted the victim and killed her and disposed of her body almost 400 miles away. Police know they have their man, but Hoskins never reveals why he killed Dorothy Berger. It's almost impossible for a rational person to describe what goes on in somebody's mind who would co commit such a horrible offense for no other apparent reason other than to get her car and drive himself home. 
because I can't even conceive why anybody would do that. Hoskins is convicted of murdering Dorothy Berger and is currently on death row awaiting execution. Dorothy Berger was a kind, generous woman who should have been able to live out her golden years with dignity. Thanks to solid police work and the efforts of everyone involved in this investigation, Mrs. Berger's loved ones could have some sense of closure and Dorothy Berger could have the proper burial she deserved. <laughs>